Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel where we talk about stuff. Uh, recently in the news, I have come across something that I found quite interesting that I'm going to share with and also subsequently explain to all of you as well just so that we're all on the exact same page. You may have been hearing rumors or have been seeing, and let's be completely honest, you definitely have seen this part, uh, in, in, inflation is running quite rampant. And nowhere is that more apparent than in the United States, not that they have the worst inflation, it's more so that we are constantly hearing about how bad the inflation is within the United States and then their supermarkets and for bread and for food, etc, etc, etc. Recently, on top of the news that uh, inflation is getting really bad, people have been spreading the news that apparently there are a number of other countries uh, who are trying to create a new currency, a new dollar, a new whatever, if you will, in an attempt to get away from inflation. I think the pushing of that news has an ulterior motive from a lot of people who are trying to say, well, like, these countries are just trying to figure out a way to, like, stop inflation. The idea of inflation is uh, apparent and inherent in all fiat currencies, all paper currencies, the currencies that we see around the world. They're all the same exact garbage. Not going into that topic or conversation, it's more of a... They are all based on the idea that you have to inflate them in order to keep capitalism going and or growing because as you will have more people being born on the planet and in every single country, you therefore need to have more currency that's being printed to be able to give to those people. This is the idea. But we've all seen that that doesn't really work as the new money that ends up being printed just ends up going to all the rich people. That's how the world kind of works. So recently in the news, there's been something about the BRICS nations, that is B-R-I-C-S, missing a K, uh, who are apparently trying to come together to be able to form a brand new currency. It has no name yet, but the idea is that these countries are banding together to be able to make a new currency that would then potentially be the dominant currency of the planet. The BRICS nations are, it is Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Um, and it's that, hmm, don't worry, I'm going to explain every, like, don't worry, I'm going to explain every single thing so that you have the entire uh, discussion in your head. Uh, the idea is that they're coming together to create a new currency, but the idea is that if you, and I mean this in the nicest way, if you know anything about history, it makes a lot more sense as to why they're creating it as opposed to the fact that it is actually being created. The other countries who are also interested, at least the rumor is, and I'm going to get into those countries as well, is that apparently it is um, Argentina, Iran, or Iran, uh, Turkey, Saudi Arabia and Egypt are also all looking to uh, get in on this as well for the new potential world currency that is being spoken about. Countries have been trying to get away from the US dollar since around the 1950s. A lot of people don't know that, and I'm sure some of you do. It's something called the Bretton Woods Agreement. This was an agreement that took place around 19, no, it began in 1944. It was more so solidified by 1945 and went into full effect by the beginning of the 1950s. The idea of the Bretton Woods Agreement was basically a way to shame and kind of put down the other countries who lost WW2. The idea was that um, there would be a new currency that would be created that would kind of uh, be above all other currencies and everyone who subsequently had lost uh, WW2 uh, would not be allowed to use this currency and or they would be kind of forced to use it to kind of finalize all transactions. During the course of this uh, agreement, this conversation that they were having, I believe there were 40 or so nations, I think that was a number, who were invited to have these discussions. Of course, the United States being at the head of the table because they were the ones who had basically won the conflict. Uh, during, I forgot what the name of, they had created a name for a currency. I can't remember the name of it right now. Uh, but this was swiftly shut down by the United States who basically raised their hand and said, no, we won, we are the world superpower right now and you are basically all going to use the US dollar. That's why, and this is the current world that we live in, for those of you who do not know, many nations around the world are actually uh, forced if you will, to every transaction that would end in their national currency needs to then end in the US dollar. So subsequently, these countries are also, if you will, uh, forced 
to buy up and to hold US dollars to make sure that they can finalize transactions. This is why they call it the petrodollar and all these other things. You can look into it and the nations that are most uh, affected by this uh, tend to usually be those in the Middle Eastern region. That is also another history lesson for later on because that's an entirely different topic altogether. So, since countries were basically told that they have to use the US dollar, there wasn't really a problem until around 1971 when the United States went off the gold standard, the US dollar began to inflate, and other countries had to keep buying more and more and more, and this is why the US dollar is the dominant global currency. Anytime that any other country has ever said that they were thinking of not using the US dollar, they were sanctioned immediately. A lot of the news that you've seen, even when you were younger, did not make a lot of uh, sense to you. And then you, if you look back at them and start paying attention as to why they were sanctioned, it's usually because the US and Europe found out that other countries were trying to get away from the US dollar and therefore they ended up getting in trouble. Countries have tried this exact thing that we're talking about before in the past. A lot of people, and I know that people don't understand history or don't, you know, I, I like history a lot. Like, I think it's, you know, we need it because it shows us where we go in the future. It sounds stupid because all your teachers said, like, we need history to understand where we're all going to go. And a lot of people don't pay attention to history. Uh, one of the first times this, like, really gained steam was roughly around 2006. I believe it was the United Kingdom, China, Russia, I think Australia and some, I think this is the general thing. They all came together talking about they would make a US dollar uh, replacement. They were shut down, I mean immediately. Like it, it took a couple of hours and they retraced all together. In 2010, this also happened between I believe China and Russia and another country also swiftly shut down. China, it is believed that uh, China, India, and I think it's just mainly those two are kind of at the forefront of who could potentially become the next world global superpower. It has nothing to do so much with economics, so much as population and then what the economy would look like when you have a billion people uh, producing, creating, and going to work, what have you, so on and uh, so forth. Where was I? I don't remember. Something about the thing with the... Anyway, so yes, these countries have been trying for a long time. This isn't the first time that this has happened. These are constant, there, there we go. There are constant discussions as to countries who are trying to leave the US dollar, but this one for some reason made a lot of the news because one of the other discussions was that these countries are apparently looking into making a digital currency as well. Now the problem is, is that a lot of times whenever people in the cryptocurrency space or outside of the cryptocurrency space end up hearing that a country is trying to do something with a digital currency, they usually end up thinking that it has to do uh, with countries trying to do something nice for crypto. I'm not sure how everyone got so brainwashed, like I'm actually not sure. Uh, this is not being done for our benefit. I don't know how to break that to you in the nicest way. Uh, countries are not trying to get away from the US dollar because they want you to live a happier life. They're trying to make their currencies and countries, the dominant countries and currency over the US dollar they say that they, it's for sovereign and economic freedom, but it's usually just to kind of make sure that they get a stronghold on the world for the last next 70 years, as the US uh, has done over the rest of the world, basically, uh, since around the 1950s. So, um, this usually also revolves around a lot of countries who are sanctioned. Once again, the Iraqs, the Irans, the Afghanistans, the yada, yada, yada. They're usually the countries who come forward who are talking about doing all of these things. Um, the other portion of the news, which loosely, I don't know why my hand did this, which loosely roughly ties into this news as well, is that we have had very clear indications over the last four years that a number of countries are actually actively trying to find other ways as opposed to creating a new currency or banding together, they're actually using Bitcoin. For those of you who watch the other channel called The Modern Investor, you might remember we spoke many times about a couple of years ago. It was first Venezuela and then El Salvador and then we got news that Oh gosh, who was it? Is it on the list? Uh, yes, of course it is. I think it was Iran uh, who announced that they were going to be actually using Bitcoin uh, for imports and exports. And a lot of people were like, that's not real, that's not true. Nope, it made uh, 
cryptocurrency headline news because you cannot have, and I dare say, mainstream media talking about that a country has actively found a way to like avoid US sanctions and or get around the usage of the US dollar. Their first transaction, I believe, was like $10 million worth of Bitcoin. And they said that by the end of last year, it would become commonplace for them to do so. But you have to think, if they're paying in Bitcoin, someone has to be paid in Bitcoin. So therefore, another country, we don't know who, ended up accepting the Bitcoin for the imports and the exports. We also had a lot of, what do you call it, rumors years ago uh, for either the, 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 the economic finance minister of Russia announced in like 2018, 2019, that Russia was actually buying up tons of Bitcoin and then he subsequently like disappeared or something. I don't know what happened to him. But yeah, so we've been getting these rumors for a long time. It is completely evident that these countries have been using and or mining Bitcoin over the last couple of years. But I think the entire BRICS nations who are trying to create another currency also comes down to the fact that if the US dollar does remain the dominant currency for the next 50 years, they're trying to find a way around it. The idea of a country having to end any transaction in US dollars or you get in trouble or you have sanctions on you is usually something that they don't want to hear. The closing statement is, uh, will this succeed? Can this happen? Can this happen? Yes. Uh, could it be shut down immediately after? Absolutely. If, so remember all the sanctions that happened the beginning or like the middle of uh, last year for the topic that was going on in the news that's still kind of going on and how like everyone uh, who was thinking about helping the other country like completely backtracked really quick because of the sanctions. If you do sanctions large enough, like other countries will completely back down and uh, or back out. Um, do I think this is going to succeed? Probably not. I've seen a lot of other YouTubers, not gonna name any names, who are uh, quite dramatic with this and they are like, yeah, this is the end of the US dollar and it's like I don't think you understand exactly how powerful the US dollar actually is like it, it It's something that even uh, goes above the human mindset of how powerful a country is You don't understand how powerful the US actually is. I think you have an idea I think you have read in history books and you've seen on the news You don't understand uh, so and I'll give it to you in the plainest way that you're all gonna understand You've seen like the last like 15, 16, 17 months, like the world's economy has been going down, right? You know, you know why it's going down? It's because the US dollar inflated and began to lose a lot of its value. So the Federal Reserve, the people who print the US dollar, came forward and said, we are willing to destroy the world's economy to make sure that the US dollar deflates, goes back down to where they wanted to, and they don't care if we dip into a depression. That's power. You would destroy the rest of the world's economy just to make sure that your currency continues to stay afloat. And that is a, fr anyway, we're not talking about how powerful the US actually is, it's not one of those videos, but you get what I mean. Uh, can this happen? Absolutely, anything can happen. You know, Monsters could fall from the sky right now. I don't know what uh, timeline we're in, but anything's possible. Uh, will this succeed? Probably not. Uh, there will be many other attempts. The only thing that's going to, uh, would cause something like this to succeed, is if we heard that India and or China uh, became the largest economies on the planet. Like, you know, we had the numbers to see it and they simply then had the backing of other nations. They've been trying to do this for a while and it's, as always, been the countries who have large amounts of sanctions against them for, uh, and they're usually not just economic, there's also a lot of other stuff going on in these countries as well. Yeah, so I think that's gonna do it for this video. I wanted to try and give you some uh, idea as to what's going on and you know take away some of the fear from it that you might have had or the idea that the US dollar was like, it's gone tomorrow, like you know. Uh, any decline of the US dollar, we will see very clearly and it'll probably take about a good 10 to 15 years. Rome was not built in a day and Rome was also not destroyed in a day either. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. Yeah, I hope that you all are having a great day, great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.